We are taking a look at the mandible. So I'm gonna hold these two together for just a moment. We're gonna take a look just at this upper part here. So this is our temporal mandibular joint. And this is where the head or condyle is making contact with the temporal bone, specifically inside the temporal fossa. And I'm gonna just pull those apart now. So that is your temporal mandibular joint between the head or condyle and that mandibular fossa. And then we're just gonna separate the skull away and take a look at the mandible more specifically by itself. So here is the head, or otherwise known as condyle, or otherwise known as condylar process of the mandible, the articulation location here. And typically whenever there's a head just below that, there's a little bit of a thinning known as the neck. We have a mandibular notch, as I'm running my finger forward and back on that. And then this kind of triangular pointed shape item here is known as your coronoid process. So condylar versus coronoid process. Turning it on its side and running my fingers down along the ramus. So this is the ramus of the mandible here. And kind of the transition between our ramus and the rest of it is, is at the angle of the mandible. And from this whole location forward, we call this typically the body of the mandible, which meets in the midline here. If I'm running my finger down along that anterior part of the ramus, I'm also tracing what is known as the oblique line of that mandible. And that almost actually kind of points right towards this foramen right here, which is known as your mental foramen. So this is the oblique line, which we have muscles that originating off this landmark here. And again, that mental foramen. When we look at an anterior view, there's quite a few things in the front here with the name of mental. So starting just from the very, very front, this projection right here is known as the mental protuberance. And on either side of that, so mental protuberance right in the center, but on either side, left and right, we have mental tubercles. So left and right mental tubercles. And if I basically, let's say hold the mandible straight down the center. This is known as the symphysis menti. So where the two mandible bones have kind of fused together in the middle, symphysis menti. Above the mental tubercle, underneath these four incisors teeth, this is known as your incisive fossa. So I have an incisive fossa on both the left and the right with that mental protuberance in the middle. So again, these incisors, some people will refer to this third tooth as the canine. So there is a canine eminence on either side, here and here. And again, we're back to this mental foramen on the front. Okay, so if we're looking at a top view, as previously in the maxilla, each one of these teeth are sitting inside an alveolar process. So we can feel the outer kind of raised area of the alveolar process. So each one of those kind of tooth sockets. And that's really kind of completing the external view of the mandible. So let's take a look now on the inside. So again, from our head, we're running down along the internal aspect of it. We have another foramen in here known as the mandibular foramen. So we had mental on the outside and you have mandibular on the inside. And then there's a little bump in here known as the lingula. So right where I'm kind of running my finger, let's see if we can get this to focus a little bit better on that location. Okay, right there is the lingula. If I trace my finger down this raised area here, this is known as your man, I'm sorry, this is known as the mylohyoid line, one of your superhyoids are running along here, mylohyoid line, and underneath that is the mandibular fossa in this area. So the mylohyoid line versus the submandibular fossa, if we go in towards the front, this screw is placed inside the mental tubercles, otherwise known as kind of mental spines. And those have a secondary name as well. They're known as genial tubercles. 
so right in here and a genio high would make an attachment there and then just kind of just inside so if i'm going to give you that anterior view and we roll on either side here and here these are known as the digastric fossa which is the origin of the anterior digastric just to the inside of that kind of the chin and if we turn back towards the front, so behind the incisor teeth, above those genial tubercles, this is known as the sublingual fossa, which means below tongue, sublingual fossa. And that is going to conclude all of the bony landmarks that we're going to discuss of this bone named the mandible.